The first deleted scene is uh, the character I played, Shorty, and Malcolm in movie theaters. If you read the autobiography of Malcolm X as told Alex Haley, Malcolm in his younger criminal days wanted to be a gangster. How do you know that? He watched uh, a lot of Hollywood films, in particular those Warner Brothers gangster films. He's starring James Cagney and Humphrey Bogart. So we, we shot scenes watching this film and we show the influence that this had on a young Malcolm Little. His nickname then at the time was called Detroit Red. America is well launched into an era of amazing madness. Bootlegging has grown from small individual effort to big business. A light, deadly wasp-like machine gun. And murder henceforth is parceled out in wholesale lots. Ah, give it to him. <laughs> That's the same guy. Remember before? Shoot him. It ain't my old sergeant. Come on, George. Tap again. Let's get out of here. It's Sergeant Letterlung's, our old pal. I told you that we'd meet up sometime when you didn't have no spikes on your sleeve. And here we Ooh. are. Oh, Go ahead around there. Would y'all be quiet and watch movies? You didn't Shut up. The next deleted scene you're about to see, the girlfriends of Malcolm Little and Shorty, played by... Kate Vernon and Debbie Mazar. Malcolm had a crime ring, and he couldn't go into these plush Tony houses in Boston, so he had the two white girls <laughs> go case the joints out. So we had this very funny scene where Sophia and Shorty's girlfriend are posing uh, some type of doing a magazine or something, so they're getting the whole tour of the house. And they just smile and say, yep, in their minds, they think, well, we're gonna steal that, we're gonna steal that, we're gonna steal that, we're gonna clean this joint out. And this lady's so happy to have her stuff in the magazine, she is no ideal. May I help you? Beacon Hill survey. We're doing a survey for the Athenium Society. We wondered if you'd permit us to include your collection in the catalog of great New England antiques. Well, yes, do come in. Thank you. This way, please. <laughs> now, ladies, watch your step, because marble can be very slippery. Oh, remind me on the way down to show you the Hall of Portraits. I don't like to brag, but well, we do go back to the Mayflower. <laughs> now, these are my prizes. My Paul Revere silver coffee service. Oh, they're lovely. Yes. They're just lovely. Yes. Oh, and my husband's collection of scrimshaw should be included. Oh, these are exquisite. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the family china. Gold leaf, of course. I think the Athenian Society will be very happy to have these. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, do you like pewter? Yes. Well, then you're in for quite a treat. Follow me, won't you? Pewter. One of the biggest transformations Malcolm had to go through was in prison, where he really took away the shackles on his mind and started to expand, started to read, started to question. And uh, I think we spent, there's got to be at least a half an hour in the prison, so we had to cut some stuff out. And this scene is about him just being, becoming a student, becoming someone who has a, 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 a thirst for knowledge, reading, 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 reading. Close. <clears throat> Let's go, knock it off. Hey. Little. Hey. 
You're studying to be the first colored president of the United States. Let's go. This deleted scene, the courtship between Betty, Shabazz, and Malcolm. And Malcolm's kind of slick here. He's checking her out too, but he's doing under the pretense of educating her about the evils of pork. But Betty, she knows what he's doing too, but Malcolm, uh, I guess uh, he just, at that time, he just couldn't like go out and try to rap to her, so he had to do it in a slick way. Considering today's standards of raising animals, mm -hmm. of curing meats, I don't fully understand, this as, as I think I should, the, the restriction that we have on pork. Sister. All right, I'll explain it to you. No, I'll do even better than that. I'll show you, but this is purely in the interest of science, you understand? Here we have the eastern mole and the brown rat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's my old friend, the aardvark. And here we have the bush pig as it says, closely related to the domestic pig. Now, do you know why Mr. Muhammad teaches us not to eat from the pig? Well, the pig contains certain disease-causing organisms. Right. Right, you're exactly right. Now, that's the physical aspect. There's also the mental or psychological aspects, and there's the spiritual reasons why we're not supposed to eat at a pig. Look at the characteristics of a pig. He's sloppy, he's greedy. You really like a pig? Isn't that <laughs> what they say? They also say you are what you eat. So what we put into our mouths affects our minds and our hearts. We don't want to take on these characteristics of sloppiness, of uncleanliness, of selfishness. Now, from a spiritual aspect or a spiritual standpoint, the Bible and the Quran teaches us that it is divinely forbidden for us to eat of any pig. In various chapters in the Bible and the Quran, it talks about this. So from a physical standpoint, from a mental or a psychological standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, we don't want anything to do with this animal. The pleasures of an ice cream soda for me, this is a very, very beautiful scene because even though Malcolm now is moving forward to head the nation of Islam, I mean, he, he had a one-track mind. I'm about the liberation of my people. I'm about the liberation of my people. He was always, as Betty said, you're always so serious. You're always so serious. And so here he was on a date and for once, not for once, but at this moment, his mind is at rest. He's not thinking about racism. He's not thinking about oppression. He's not thinking about slavery. He's not thinking about black people being lynched, castrated, <laughs> whipped, hung. He's not thinking about <coughs> Bull Connor in, Mon in Birmingham. He's just thinking about just sitting down in an ice cream parlor with a beautiful lady and having a tasty ice cream soda. One of the simple pleasures of life. For Sunday. Thank you. And with a strawberry soda. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, this is something I haven't done in, oh, 15 years. What? Sat down with a beautiful sister. And had an ice cream soda. Well, how do you like it? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's delicious. With the character of Benjamin, we wanted him to represent the young black minds. That's what he represents. And for those cats, young cats at that time, they were feeling Malcolm more than Dr. King. And so when Benjamin shows up and says he wants to be part of the nation, you know, Malcolm's going to put him through it. Malcolm believed in hard work. He believed in effort. And so some cat was just going to show up and come in off the street and say, boom, 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 you're in. So he puts Benjamin through several tests, not only to prove to Malcolm, but so Benjamin would believe himself that he had the 
go through these things, A, B, C, D, to accomplish, to come in. Another thing I liked about that scene is like, at the end, is very, I mean, people don't realize Malcolm, <laughs> he had a great sense of humor. And so you have all these guys, Malcolm and his two guys there, <laughs> chowing down, eating food, and, and Benjamin's like starving, <laughs> and they're going up, just like looking at him, so I'm hungry. And then Malcolm looks to his boy, and he takes a little morsel of food and, <laughs> and gives it to him, and everybody's keeping a straight face for as long as they can, then they bust out laughing. All right, brother. It's almost time for you to receive your ex, but there's something very important you have to do first. Now, this is your savior's letter. A permanent record of your salvation and your acceptance of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's also a test of your discipline. The number one thing the so-called Negro is lacking in America is discipline. So I want you to copy it exactly as it is here. I mean, right down to the dotted I's, the cross T's, the, the spaces between the words, everything, exact. As a further test of your discipline, I want you to go on a fast for three days. No solid foods, nothing but juices and water. You understand? Yes, sir. I'll be back. All right, take your time. Discipline. Yes, sir. All right. Please. And don't trace it. How you brothers doing? You all right, brother? Good, good. How you doing, sister? All right. Somebody help that sister up the stairs there. Hello there. How are you, sister? Good to see you. Good to see you. Ah. Hey, Johnny, how you doing? How you feeling? Good, good. Oh, my beautiful wise sisters. There you are. How you doing, boss? Good. OK, brothers. How you brothers doing today? All right, you good? You good? You stop selling them numbers. This is due to power. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Brother Minister. Right. Thank you. Well, Good to have you with us, brother. Brother Minister, mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, uh, can I get something to eat? <laughs> you want something to eat? Oh, yes, I'm sir. Sorry. Yes, sir. Um, you want to give him something? We should have really kept this in, I think. Of all the stuff we have, this should have came in. If you go there, you know that the nose is blown up. The nose is not there on the Sphinx. And the story is this, that Napoleon saw that big, wide, negroidal African nose staring at him and he couldn't deal with it. So they shot a cannon and blew the nose off the Sphinx. Hmm. 
Take a look at it. Take a good look at that nose, or what used to be that nose, and take a look at those lips, what used to be those lips. What happened to them? Why'd they blow them off? Napoleon did it. Then look at this nose, look at these lips. Think about it. The last transformation of Malcolm's life was when he took his Hajj. Because under the restricted viewpoint of the world under the nation of Islam, he had been led to believe that only black people were Muslims. And also, he'd been led to believe that all white people were blue-eyed devils. So when he takes his Hajj, when he goes to the holy city of Mecca, and he sees people of all shades, you know, whatever, I mean, just it's a melting pot of people, all Muslims, all believe in Allah. It was an eye-opening experience. And we want to have this scene after his Hajj, where he's back in Cairo, where he's a guest of this uh, diplomat, and he's trying to hit him, say, look, you know, the stuff that you learned under Minister Elijah Muhammad, you know, that stuff's not really true Islam. And you need to really do your homework. You need to check yourself because uh, I believe that your person is always seeking the truth and you need to, you know, do your homework. So this whole scene talks about, as I said before, his last metamorphosis. From here, I'm heading on down to Ghana in Nigeria getting together with some of the leaders down there to try to get them to understand that our struggle in America, the American Negro struggle, is the same as the African man's struggle. But I just wanted to thank you for your hospitality, for your kindness. As you know, if it wasn't for your letter and your help, there's no way I would have gotten into Mecca, being that I'm not, or that I wasn't a, an Orthodox Muslim. Now you are. And you must go back to America. You taught people to hate, which is wrong. You taught people to believe in a false idea, which is wrong. Malcolm, you're responsible. You are personally responsible for every individual who joined the nation of Islam because of you. What you built up will, will eventually destroy you if you don't go back home and break this. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. No man has truly has truly believed until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. From the source, the autobiography of Malcolm X, as told to Alex Haley. Malcolm told Alex that one of his greatest regrets was this one incident where a very honest, genuine, white co-ed, I forgot the campus, came up to him and, and you know, was really very, she was genuine, said, you know, I'm a good white person. What can I do to help the cause? And Malcolm looked at her like, he, like she was crazy and said, absolutely nothing. And the woman was crushed. Man, it was really had a effect, probably had a more effect on Malcolm than it did uh, that co-ed. So Malcolm said if he ever was given them a chance, if he ever was given another chance and he met her again, he would tell her a different answer that he would make amends for what he told her. So uh, we did this scene for Malcolm to give him another chance to tell this white co-ed a different answer. Mr. X, I have a good heart. I'm a good person despite my whiteness. What can the good white people like myself who are not prejudiced do to help the cause of the Negro? Well, I, what's your name? 
Franny. Franny, I learned the hard way that racism starts at home in one's own community. So I would suggest that if you want to help the Negro, you get together with other people that think the way you do, that are sincere like I, like I know you are, and you fight the battle against racism right where it starts, in your own home and in your own community. I will, Mr. X. I will. And pray. <laughs>